Mike is live. Hello, friends. What's up? Welcome to another episode of Brew Chatter Live. Um, shall we start? Just start with whiskey right off the bat? Yes, because I think the last live, <laughs> when we were, we started with whiskey, ended with whiskey, and I ended with a DD on the way home, <laughs> which was, just, I don't I think that's a great live broadcast. It's like, it's like, can you come please pick me up? It's like, we did a broadcast and I finished the bottle at Basil Hayden Dark. <laughs> Fantastic whiskey, by the way, but can you please come get me? Yeah. <laughs> so this week... And I know everybody's going, they're drinking whiskey again. You saw what happened last time. <laughs> but I didn't see any of it. Yeah, right? <laughs> well, actually, I did. I watched a video the day after. Sound sucked, too, and I'm, I apologize for that. Yeah. Hopefully, the sound's better on this one. Yeah, it will be. And um, you can come in if it's not, and yeah. then we'll fix it right now so we don't have to go through a whole broadcast. Yeah, I promise <laughs> I won't do my second glass of whiskey till 15 minutes into the show. That's... Are you sure you want to make that? I promise? got 14 minutes left. <laughs> <laughs> so this week, Joe and Christina were kind enough to bring us a bottle of Frey's Rye, and uh, we thought we should drink to Joe and Christina. <laughs> yeah, we should drink to Joe and Christina. So uh, <laughs> thank you, Joe and Christina. Josh brought in these uh, whiskey stones to keep everything nice and cool, and very, uh, very exciting. You know, Frey makes some pretty killer products, and I've been super excited to try this rye since I heard about it. Yes. Uh, producer, you want in on this? Oh, yes. There's, there's only a squirt left, so. Mm. <laughs> yes. Awesome. All right, there's well, a little this. bit left for Josh and I to split, maybe. Yeah. Unless I get to it first. Frey's doing a great job with their bourbons. Yeah. They're they're murdering it. Their, their products are top yeah. notch. And they got great, uh, I mean, just look at this tasting cork i guess we'll call it it's like so cool yeah awesome branding, branding and everything yep. yeah high high caliber like you can tell they don't they don't spare a couple extra cents on packaging like their their stuff is nice and it tastes that way which i love so the other cool thing That's and good stuff right i'm there. sorry welcome everybody what are you drinking yes we <laughs> need to welcome everybody we're, <laughs> we're sitting here just rambling on about the whiskey I know. We're drinking. <laughs> sorry welcome everybody what are you drinking uh we're drinking a couple different things the Frey rye and also, uh, Mike and Cade and Mika have been canning just about every homebrew they make. So they had this really fun idea to do a stout with, what is that that whiskey called? Um, it's it's one of the newer like cinnamon whiskeys on the market. Is it cinnamon? I yeah. don't know. I was doing something on the computer. I was oh, ignoring you. So. Fair enough. I get that a lot. Cole was chatting on there and I was reading it and I didn't have the chat turned on to go into our video. <laughs> so I <laughs> nice. was turning it on. And now, now Cole it says the chat's ready to display messages, and then Cole's message came up. Nice. He said, Cole says, hey, hey guys, I'm, I'm here for a quickie before dinner. Cole, yeah. you are always welcome for a quickie. I think that came out wrong. Absolutely. Um, <laughs> so racing right along. So they, they took, they, they aged <laughs> this, uh, their, their oak chips, and I think they used medium. No, they used light. They used light oak chips and they aged it in this whiskey and then they threw it on this dry Irish stout. Mobius, what's up, man? He's drinking a dry Irish stout too. That's awesome. Nice. Uh, welcome. Um, so we thought because we're doing oak aging and oak and everything oak today that, that this would be an awesome... Uh... They even signed it. I almost <laughs> don't want to open it. I know, right? Yeah. They, they said they'd bring more with the, the labels they made. These guys are... They're, they're all they're artists. They're quite the artists too. Yeah. Yeah. They make cool labels, yeah, so... Yeah, all the labels for Trader Joe's, I think, is yeah. what he's seen. Yeah. yeah, they do They do a lot of art stuff. and uh, So, great beer, good stuff. Yes, that's awesome. Awesome. Abby, what's up? What's up, Abby? She's about doing? to pull out some tapash, which is awesome. I don't know, uh, tapache, tapash, however you say it. That's a, uh, a pineapple <laughs> fermentation, which is super cool. Um, she says, I always forget to get a drink before you guys start the stream until you guys ask what we're drinking. <laughs> That's the whole reason we ask what you're drinking. I love it. <laughs> hey, Matt, we missed you too. <laughs> this, <laughs> this episode is also right up your alley. Yes. <laughs> Thanks for joining us, everybody. Missed you, uh, Matt. So that's what we're drinking. Uh, we encourage you to say what you're drinking because, you know, it's a beer show. We it's a beer show. This is all we talk about is uh, beer, spirits. Uh, alternative fermentations, yep. kombuchas, uh, food Tepache. fermentation. Tepache. Just as a random example. <laughs> I, yes. <laughs> I think it's great. It's awesome. Yeah, it's awesome. Fermentation in general. I, like, I love seeing what everybody's doing and all the, the crazy stuff that they do. And Hey, wait, what's that? 
That's not either of those things. Uh, this was Tyler Cider. Nice, the pear cider. The pear cider. I I just or, finished mine. Pe- peach cider. You messed me up. Peach? That was a peach, yeah. Yeah, it's a peach. Oh. Told me earlier. It tastes like it. pears. You like totally <laughs> stepped on. You stepped on me when I was trying to say what it was. I figured I should give it back. You're always trying to be in the spotlight. <laughs> I can't help it. I'm a star. <laughs> All right. I love this show so, so much. Tyler's peach cider, which peach was cider. phenomenal. Thank you, Tyler. Yeah, Tyler's thanks, man. Tyler's our director, producer, friend. <laughs> he just gave us the good job. <laughs> so, <clears throat> brief overview of the topic tonight. We are talking oak. Uh, pretty much everything oak. Oak, as I'm sure all of you know, is a huge subject. So I tried to dial back some of the more crazy science and keep it to things that were really relevant to all of us as homebrewers. Um, oh. I forgot to pull a beer. all kinds of messages in here. What What's are you a, looking for? Matt says I'm drinking beer that hasn't been through a brewery yet because I'm at work. <laughs> <laughs> oh, you're bringing the barrel. I up forgot there? the most important prop. This thing is highly infected. You should only <laughs> touch this thing with a hazmat shoot. So that suit. being said, um, shoot, <laughs> suit. <laughs> Josh said if enough people comment and ask him, he will drink out of this barrel. No, I did not. <laughs> this is like, I mean, it's very. I mean, in the name of science. This barrel is very interesting, and it has a lot of really cool stuff going on in there. Some stuff we're not sure about that's going on in there. But uh, it basically has a two-row wash in it and a lot of bugs. And, and some barley sour. wine and, barley and wine. some stout. Yeah, from a Solera project. <laughs> yeah, it's It's got a little bit of everything. So it's super cool, and it's, it's it actually tastes like it's been sitting there in open air for three years. We so started that's good. this back... 4 11, 16. Is that what the date is on it? Yeah. Yeah. No, yeah. that's when we pitched Lambicus. You're right. It was part of the back then, I thought. 7 14. So July 7, 14. of. 14. <laughs> July of 2014. So this barrel has been here for six years as yep. of July. July. <laughs> Yes. So there's there's all kinds of madness going on in here. And I've been moving this thing around like crazy. T- oh, yeah. <laughs> like, Every oh. time we move the store, we it yeah. goes to a different location we, and then just sits there. It's, it feels like we rearrange a store like every, like, what, a few months or yeah. so, you know? It's about what, once what a quarter. Just... Fresh way or fresh way or fresh? Fresh way? Fresh way? Feng shui? Feng shui? Feng shui. Feng shui. We, we want <laughs> all of the energy in the store to go towards making you feel better when you walk in and yeah. it works these guys are like listen to these guys they don't even know what they're doing <laughs> i haven't even drank whiskey yet <laughs> <clears throat> jesse what's up man thank you for joining us <laughs> yeah let's throw some shout outs in here we got a few yeah let's these. throw some shout outs uh cole asked if we got that pigeon head keg yes um we've got so pigeon heads Oktoberfest is just hit the market this week so we'll have package and we'll have it on draft um so for all of you who are like me who wait for this beer every year it's it's now it's coming. It'll be here tomorrow. So Pigeon come by and does snack such them. a good job. That, too. that beer is so good. And Brian and his team, fucking yeah, they murder it. Or I shouldn't cuss on. Sorry, they, they do a great. They job. do a great job without cussing. <laughs> <laughs> the the other cool thing is, um, they were nice enough to give us their recipe. So if you love it and you want to brew it, we can make that happen. And that's straight from Brian. So that's the guy that made the recipe. Super cool. So that's coming tomorrow. Um, Jesse says, you guys have Heretic? I need to stop by soon. Yes. Yes. If, Speaking of Heretic, yeah. we were just on Heretic, or not Heretics, but Jamil and John Palmer's live stream yesterday. Yeah, Bruce Strong, on baby. Bruce Strong on the Brewing Network. Yes. Yeah, which super is super fun. fun. If you guys haven't seen that show, you should definitely tune in when they uh, put it up on the website. Yeah. We were also live on their Facebook page, The Brewing Network. So uh, yeah. definitely check that out. We had a lot of fun with Jamil. Had some really good laughs on there. Some really and, good conversation, uh, good too. Good conversation. The, just the whole, talking homebrewing. Yeah, the whole theme was common mistakes that brewers make. So we, we kind of went through everything that all of us could think of and, like, all the little hiccups that you run into when you start brewing. It yeah. was it was super fun. The um, If you go to our Facebook page, too, that, that live video is also shared on our page. So yeah, you definitely can go check through it and out. Watch it. Yeah. Support the brewing network. Support yep. uh, Heretic Brewing. Yep. And uh, John Palmer by buying his book, uh, How to Brew. How to Brew. <laughs> I was almost going to say Better Brewing, but <laughs> that's Gordon Strong's book. <laughs> yeah, you're thinking something different. Yeah, but that's a fantastic book. Everyone Phillip, should have that book. Philip's in here. And Brewing Classic Styles. Yes, and Brewing Classic Styles. And yeah. Yeast. Yes. Uh, I mean, the 
Jim is a legend. Listen to what he says. It, Palmer's a legend. Palmer's a legend. The, those guys taught me how to brew. Yeah, fantastic um, individuals. If see, you're not following them, you should. Be. Yeah, go follow them and yeah, follow the BN because and the Brewing Network. Yeah, they're good stuff. Mm-hmm. So Phillips and, in here. Phillips says, "Hey guys, so maybe this is a good time to do a uh, a, a little." Where'd you see the? I don't. Know. I'm in the Brew Challenge group. How do we keep missing that? I don't know. So Philip's but... gonna see it if I throw up the little intro thing. Yes. I've been watching this over and over. We should do it again. So, <laughs> real fast before we do the Trinity update. <laughs> oh, oh, I wanted to do it. I was like on the cusp. Roll the tape. No, you told me to wait. No, I said real fast before we do the Trinity update. Oh, roll the clip. See, I'm a little. I, 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 I'm I was a little leading slow. you into it, man. You were I, was, to say I, that. I was setting up the suspense. <laughs> <laughs> I didn't really, hold on, hold on, guys. You might want to turn your headphones down. I got the volume turned up. Let's see if I can do the right thing here. Ready? Awesome. What'd you guys think of that? Hope you guys enjoyed that as much as we did. <laughs> I definitely that, enjoyed it. It never I, gets old. I couldn't see it, so <laughs> <laughs> I know what it looks like. It looks great. I know. I love editing video. Um, so Trinity, I'm sure you guys saw the post last week that Trinity was at 10:14. Phil's recipe ended at 10:15, but we were also a little low on gravity on brew day, so it's it's coming to culmination. It should be done. It should be done with the standard 14 day yesterday, so the guys are gonna start crash chilling it, and then uh, Phil and Matt and Shannon, all those guys are, we're all gonna meet back up at Pigeon Head and taste it before it goes to kegging, probably next week. So awesome. the week That's after that, exciting. yeah, it's super exciting. So the week after that, we will all be able to drink it, which is what I'm really excited for. Nice. Um, taste so far from what I tasted when I pulled the sample was, was right on point. Super good. Yeah, I'm super excited about this beer. <laughs> We're getting on kind of Phil says that still an awesome was, intro. <laughs> that intro was sick. Appreciate it. Matt says if you need a feng shui, feng shui consultation, I've got a pretty. <laughs> I, I've had nice. one sip of whiskey. I can't even speak. I've got a pretty kick-ass designer. We, I'm gonna DM you later. <laughs> Aaron, thanks what's up? The, thanks for all the good comments yeah, on the intro. Appreciate it, guys. That's awesome. Yeah, it's awesome, Abby. <laughs> all of you guys. So Bryce, fancy, says Bryce. Facebook user. That's Phil. Phil? Yeah. Yeah, thanks, uh, Facebook user Phil. <laughs> <laughs> on my computer, it doesn't say his name. <clears throat> you got it. I anyway, love it. moving on. We haven't talked about hardwood for a while, and we're already 13 minutes into this uh, wow. thing. We're, or oak. We're, we're bringing it there already? No, but that's what you wrote on here. I got like seven pages of stuff to go through. <laughs> to be and fair, and like, you, you pointed this out, it, the, as as the bullet points get more detailed, it, it leans more towards the guys. inside One, of the page. Two, three, <clears throat> four, this is, this is tucking five, it, right? oak, <laughs> six oak pages. Oak is such a huge me. subject. Like I have not read it yet. We c- <laughs> to the resounding <laughs> surprise of nobody. <laughs> I know. Uh, but <clears throat> oak is such a huge subject, and there's so many things that you can really get into and dive into and geek out on. Um, one thing I, one, one thing we did that I thought would be super cool, so these are all vodka. And these are all, it's light, medium, and heavy toasted oak. So this is just vodka. This is about 22 hours because I did it about 8 o'clock last night when I got home. Um, these... Each one has 15 grams of oak, so it's it's same same across the board. Uh, by weight, of course, because we're not savages. Well, the uh, surface area is so different too with everything. Truth. So we'll get into that later. I'm probably like page five, bullet point. It's on page four, bullet point 36. Okay. So um, <laughs> so this is light oak. You can see how light it is. Kind of reminds you of an Irish style whiskey. This is medium oak and quite a bit darker. This is your more classic bourbon kind of color this is heavy oak which surprisingly it's fairly close it's almost lighter than the medium oak yeah which is kind of ironic yeah and this is all i mean i I used kettle and this is kettle vodka yeah kettle easy clean clean just to get a good comparison which is a good idea yeah Yeah. 
Um, this is another thing that Josh will drink if we get enough comments. So no, I will not. <laughs> Where is this? This is not on your bullet points that I have not read, but I, I, I'm pretty sure I would have noticed that. I thought I'd do just a little bit of a live read to keep the audience engaged. Oh you know my what gosh. I mean? All right. <laughs> live read is always fun. <laughs> Cole says, but did we talk about quickies? <laughs> no, we did not. <laughs> Love it. And two points on the Archer uh, reference, Bryce. Yes, we're definitely doing phrasing. <laughs> <laughs> All right. So, All right. <clears throat> diving right along. Before we get too far into Oak, um, we should talk about store updates, new products, all the fun stuff. Um, so if you didn't get a chance to read the new Molasses blog last week, you should check definitely it read it. It's awesome, and I never realized until I was going through doing the research for that blog that Molasses is an absolute superfood. And so not only can you use it as that, but it's super fun to ferment with. It's good for you. It's really good for So what I'm saying is we can make healthy rum. Mm -hmm. Healthy which, rum. Which is a whole thing. <laughs> um, <clears throat> excuse me. Uh, Brew Rentals is rocking and rolling. Um, if you have... <laughs> James says drink. <laughs> <laughs> I like that. There's, there's not even a game. He's just like, nope, drink. drink. That. Yeah, James, yeah. you know what? Cheers, man. That's, that's fair. <laughs> if you are local uh, don't be shy to get on and reserve the stuff that you need as far as presses crushers distimmers the uh the apple crusher because it's going to come soon and it's all going to be blocked out so the the website happens in real time so you know exactly when you can rent all of it and the canner of course the canner is just super cool so uh, again it, the cool factor is kind of unbeatable yes definitely cool um abby says i used dark toast in my braggot and my boche which were already a little dark but the oak made them super dark which looks cool hell yeah nice. the, good I, job abby i that's love it awesome. we'll get in that yeah, super braggots? cool mm. braggots and boches those are such cool things she's doing all the hard fun stuff yeah seriously and i love that because yeah. she's so outside of the box but doing like the cool things that i want to do yeah, super <laughs> cool so if you ever want somebody to uh, give you feedback on those, Abby. Let's keep moving forward. <laughs> all right, all right. Sorry, I'm, I'm done hustling the crowd for beer or for mead. Um, <clears throat> Bryce says drink to your health. We always do. We always do. <laughs> Why else would you drink? <laughs> um, so that's all awesome. Um, instructional videos, too. We're, we're going to do – we're going to have a ton of fun and play with the uh, – all of the equipment and do some videos so you guys should look forward to that because yeah crusher the press the yep. distimmer crusher distimmer you know yep. we got a lot of really cool equipment check out brewchatterrentals.com yep. and um just reserve the equipment if you're locally locally yes. if you're local you know check <laughs> it out reserve an extra couple of Canner. days if you're not local because we're, we're we're not going to count you out but you know drive time yeah <laughs> Uh, now I got drink to London, drink to France, drink until you pee. <laughs> what is this? I, I don't know, but it's moving down. Like, apparently the drinking game is just people telling us to drink, which is, is fun, but we have some technical stuff to get into, so. Uh, Abby has a good comment. It wouldn't, it wouldn't be the first time we did yeah. a hammer. <laughs> he says, yes, I'm sure you like a, you'd like a very large sample size, just for scientific purposes, I'm sure. Definitely. Yes, I mean, you know. Science, science is very important, so yes. what, whatever sample size you have, we'll be happy with. But I definitely want to taste the stuff you do because you're way outside the box, and I love it. Good job, Abby. Yep. Cheers awesome. to that. Yeah, um, we definitely encourage that behavior. Mm, absolutely. For everybody brewed. Anyway, we got to keep moving. All right, let's keep moving. We're already like uh, 19 minutes in, and so I'm good for another drink. And uh, There's only this much, so you have to share. Well, that's how good, dude. You used to vessel. <laughs> so do you. <laughs> Not for long. Anyway, all right. So yeah, molasses blog. Definitely check out that blog. Yeah. It's a very good blog. Uh, talking about blackstrap molasses with rum and a lot of stuff, and it's yeah. like oak aging and blackstrap. It sort of pertains to each other, you know, which is very good. Yeah, uh, blackstrap rum with oak is one of the most incredible things that you will Super ever do for yourself. Super simple, and it's just a great spirit. Yep, fifteen yes. pounds of blackstrap, oak, some water, oak. Yep. Distillation in between there. Yeast. <laughs> it's a whole thing. Yeah. <clears throat> All right. We got to keep moving. All right. Racing right along, obviously. Okay, G. Okay, G. What so, is it good for? 
<laughs> nice. I didn't even think of that. Two points. All right. I love Rush Hour. So. I watch all of them. All right. Oak's incredible. We all know that. Um, there are different, a, a ton of different ways. Let me make sure I'm on, on task here. So. Okay. <laughs> I, I actually put on here, this was more for Josh than for me, uh, types of oak, what's it made of? Duh, oak trees. <laughs> there, it, it gets a lot more specific than that because you have barrels. You have staves that are available on the market. You have spirals. You have chips. You have cubes. So you have all of these different ways to either infuse the oak into your product or infuse your product into the oak. Now, the, the barrels, they're a, a lot harder to come by and they're a lot more expensive and rare it's then you got to worry about leaking evaporation shipping <clears throat> i mean there's a lot of issues that come with doing oak barrels oak barrels definitely have the cool factor however there's a lot of alternatives to it yeah. which i think we may talk about if i would have read the bullet points <laughs> we will get there real fast on comments cole says josh has three mason jars to drink no need for rj to share what Oh, well my said, my friend. Oh, we got somebody from Sweden. <laughs> hey, what's up, man? Thank you for joining us. No uh, worries. It's all yeah. good. Should I play the intro? He missed the start. <laughs> <laughs> let's let's not get crazy. <clears throat> if I start to diatribe too much, then throw the intro in just to break it up. <laughs> oh, my gosh. But he missed it, and he's in Sweden. He's going to talk about it with his friends in Sweden. Play the I, intro. I love this guy. Just, just play the intro. No, they don't want to see it again. It's like... But I, th I feel like I should play it again. <laughs> but I tell you what, we'll play it again in fifteen. Uh, yeah, we'll do it in fifteen minutes. Dude, we're gonna be getting to page three in fifteen minutes. We're not gonna have time for the intro. Yeah, have you guys seen the amount of pages I have? <laughs> yeah. All right. <clears throat> so let's talk about types of oak first because types it's very oak. important. You have American, French, and Hungarian. What many people may not know is there are two types of French, and one of those types is also Hungarian. Does that make any sense? Right? Explain it to me. <laughs> so American oak is Quercus alba, and it's super dense, it's super tight grain, which is part of the reason why it began being what people made barrels out of. The other cool part of American oak is you can actually cut the staves with a saw. <laughs> with French oak, they literally have to split it, otherwise it's not watertight. Did you know that? I I do now. It's a whole thing. Fun I had, fact. I had no That's idea. That's pretty cool. I didn't even know. Where did you read that at? Was it Wikipedia? I, I read it in like 14 different sources because I thought it was sources. BS. <laughs> and I'm I was like, you found it. that can't be did true. Did you put your references in your footnotes? <laughs> <laughs> no, but now that we're posting them, I'm going to have to. <laughs> yeah, we probably should do that. <laughs> All right. That's so, awesome, but that's really good. That's good that you it, brought that up. Well, it's, that's it's, good to know. It's super cool because think about how much control and, and how much like actual what manpower. Is so different between those two now. So this is the thing. American oak is super dense and heavy. French oak is tight grained, but it's not as dense, so but it's not it's as heavy. Right? Not necessarily. Not necessarily. It's it's still a, a, an exceedingly tight grain. But it's not as heavy, so there there's not as much um, water or whatever molecules that make up hemicellulose, et cetera, et cetera, that make it so dense. So that's why with American oak you get this this super dense these these big forward flavors because the 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 molecules are packed so tightly together that as the ethanol dissolves each layer there's stuff going in whereas the the french oak is a lot more subtle and a lot more complex because you <clears throat> it doesn't have that density so you're not getting as much per layer going into the product does that make any sense i think i followed you so so much good information right now thank you <laughs> all right <clears throat> Hague says it's 3 25 a.m here so it's not easy to follow you guys <laughs> Yeah, he's well, like the one eyelid open. He's like, right. right. Well, <laughs> hopefully you have a a whiskey and a beer to keep you company. And <laughs> I appreciate you. I yeah. appreciate you tuning in. That's yeah, awesome. I really appreciate you coming to hang yeah. out, man. That's awesome. It's fantastic. All right. <clears throat> so French oak comes in two varieties: Quercus petrea and Quercus rober. Now, the the petrea is known to be the more aromatic and less tannic variety. So. Usually when the higher end wineries are talking about that they age in French oak, they're aging in Petrea. 
whereas a lot of high-end brandies, the the French brand, like that Napoleon we had, which was probably one of the most incredible oak age products that I've had in my life. Like the the oak was insanely good. You remember when uh, Devin brought that in, Devin and Amy? I do. <clears throat> that was a while ago. Yeah, it was a while ago. It's it's a twenty dollar bottle of French brandy, and it's it's incredible. And those guys are using Rober because Rober is a lot more suited towards spirits uh, less aromatics more tannins so it, it builds the body um, this is the fun part Hungarian oak is also primarily Petraea mm. but just like you get with um, with these these noble hops where you get that that je ne sais quoi from the environment that's what makes the Hungarian oak different and it doesn't to me, it doesn't make a whole lot of sense as to why it's cheaper than French oak. It makes sense why it's, it's more expensive than American, but it's it, the, the so good. Well, and the the same like these people have to split. I'm sure they have machines that, that do the splitting to make the staves, but these people have to split these staves in order for them to be watertight. It's a uh, it has something to do with the the makeup of the oak and the heart of the oak, where if you use a saw, it cuts a certain thing open and it won't hold liquid. So they have to split it, and they have to split it at exactly the right spot in order to make it work. Huh. That's so super cool. It's super cool. <clears throat> but it makes sense why Hungarian and French oak is so much more expensive, because there's so much more labor that goes that's involved. And, like, you're looking at central France, the limousine region, uh, and a couple like, places in Hungary. Yeah. There's, there's not a whole lot of land that hasn't already been taken over in Europe. Or on your contract. <laughs> <laughs> or on your contract, exactly. Yeah, it's the big thing. <clears throat> it's huge. So that being said, um, occasionally Quer there is Quercus Rober in Hungarian oak, or there's a barrel made out of Rober as opposed to Petraea. But it's, it's from what I was reading, it's about 95% Petraea. Yeah. So, if if you're doing anything but spirits, you want to lean towards Petraea, and you should you should really use the botanical name if you're ordering a barrel or whatever. <laughs> I'm missing stuff here. <clears throat> Had a few BA Imperial Stouts and barley ones tonight, so I'm good. Yes, <laughs> I love it. Darren says, "Is Hungary part of the EU?" <laughs> <laughs> the European Union. Yeah. <laughs> Probably. I don't know. I'm a beer guy. I'm not. I'm not like a. A map guy, so I'm I'm going with maybe. Dude, this is so awesome. <laughs> I know, I love it. So cool. Uh, good to see you, Darren. Man, yeah. thanks for joining us. Thank you. <clears throat> um, so racing right along, I uh, we we should definitely mention how unique Hungarian oak is because you get you get a lot of that that big American forwardness from Hungarian oak, but you also get a lot of the French subtlety, and <clears throat> I don't know some a lot of the wines and the distillates that I've tried with Hungarian oak are they're they're really on point. Yeah, Hungarian oak is really good. I, I think there's a lot to be said for it, and and I don't know if you know I'm sure there's there's better oaks that are suited for better products or whatever, but Hungarian seems to be pretty stellar across the board. Hungarian is pretty good, and you see it a lot in Napa and Sonoma. Yeah. Like a lot of their barrels are Hungarian <clears throat> oak barrels now. Yeah. It's like if you were to do a tour, you'll, you'll notice it's a lot of it's Hungarian oak yeah. now. And uh, you know, uh, I don't know. I don't know enough about to make too many comments while I'm being recorded and videotaped. But, <laughs> <laughs> but there must be something to it, right? Yes, it's, that, I think so. You know, and and it's good wine coming out of it too. Yeah, you know. Well, and and from. At least from what we've tasted from customers and, and what we've tried, the, the Hungarian stuff seems to be a really nice meeting of the minds between, like I said, that American forward and that French subtlety. You kind of you kind of get the best of both worlds. So if you're oaking things, you should definitely try it, no matter what you're oaking. <laughs> yeah, <clears throat> the Hungarian oak cubes. Yeah, exactly. So how are barrels made? This is a super fun subject because I, I don't think a lot of people realize how much goes into oak and staves and barrels and all of that. It's not easy. It's not easy. It's definitely a process. The, uh... Go ahead. No, no, no I was just going to massage the barrel. Just <laughs> Sometimes you have to massage the barrel to make the product come out right. Uh, how much of this are you going to drink tonight? I'm not drinking any of this tonight. There's not enough people watching. <laughs> 
But to, but like these states, like that was seen when the charges like when they need or charge char. char. <laughs> they would have them sit out on these pallets and they season it, you know. Then they get like the coopers, get the bands and stuff, and the rivets and get them put in there. <laughs> so real fast, that was a great point. Pigeonhead just said, "Tell me about your aging wood beer, Daddy." <laughs> Killing it, fellas. Love watching the wild crew. <laughs> Thanks for tuning in, guys. We really appreciate oh it. Oh, my gosh. <clears throat> we're, uh, we're super excited to have your Oktoberfest on tap tomorrow. So, <laughs> Yes, very much so. Oh, I love it. Um, <clears throat> so when when they're making barrels and staves and all of this, it's, it's a whole thing. Like, you can't just cut an oak tree down and saw it into barrels. They have huge yards that... They, they stave them out, either by splitting or by, or by yeah. sawing, depending on where you are in what country. That's what I was trying to talk about before you rudely interrupted me. Oh, well, good. No. Please, you, continue. I have to check the bullet list. <laughs> but <clears throat> they, they set these out, and this, this can be a two- to five-year deal. Where it's a big deal. They just, they just sit there, and they're open to the elements, and they, they wait. Season. Exactly. It's seasoning. And it's super important. Um, you notice the difference between like uh, an American cherry wood smoked malt versus the the German beech wood aged malt or smoked malt. And it, it's the same sort of deal. They set it out in yards and they just let it season, and, and it's a whole thing. It's uh, it makes a huge difference. And they're going for a specific moisture content and a specific time and a specific flavor, and that's another part of the reason why barrels are so expensive because it's you know this this barrel before it got here or before it got to the person that brought it here <laughs> was <laughs> you know was was easily three years in the making at least it's with all the bands the stays the rivets or nails or, that's a whole nother thing that i didn't even write down like the actual building of a barrel, I'm pretty sure I'd yeah, lose we my didn't mind. Yeah, the bands and stuff. Like, it's yeah. cool. It's an art, you know? It's, it's like welding. It's literally an art. It's like TIG welding. You know, TIG welding, there's a way to do it, but it's some art form. <laughs> that stout is so on point. It was peanut butter whiskey, not cinnamon whiskey, in the stout. Did you say cinnamon whiskey? I said cinnamon, and I meant peanut I should have corrected you. You should have corrected me. I knew peanut butter whiskey. <clears throat> That's why I should be writing these bullet points. Next week, they're Josh's bullet points. <laughs> it's going to be one page. We're going to have the best life ever. <laughs> it's like, uh, Cliff says, I need that barrel for my moonshine that I'm doing right now. <laughs> Bring it on down, man. We'll age it here for you. You're, you're going to have to blend it with some uh, crappy Brett beer, but <laughs> we can make this work. <laughs> I got to so, give a shout out. Hold on. My son just texted me. He's 11. I got to give him a shout out. Caleb. Thank you for tuning in, bud. What's up, Caleb? He Thanks doesn't have a YouTube account, and he's just texting, I don't have an account. I can't chat with you. And he's like, but I'm watching. So I, I got to give a shout-out to my son. That's awesome. He's my oldest. <laughs> so I got three kids. He's my oldest. That's, That's awesome. awesome. That's super Thanks cool. Thanks for watching, Caleb. <laughs> All right. All right. Moving on, Caleb. States. <clears throat> Racing right around, along, Caleb. <laughs> so the <clears throat> seasoning does a couple of things. And, and one of those things is oak has naturally a ton of tannic compounds, uh, many of which are super volatile. <laughs> Cliff says, don't worry, I'll bring you all some soon. <laughs> awesome. We will drink it. Thanks, man. That's super cool. Thank you, Cliff. Uh, <clears throat> Thumbs up. Good job. Good job. <laughs> so there, there are a lot of oak naturally has a lot of these, these tannic compounds, and many of which are more volatile. We didn't. I, I didn't get too much into the the actual like chemical compounds because you know you guys are here to watch a show, not a chemistry lesson. So. Uh, or maybe they are. Well, maybe you are, and you know, DM we got us. six pages of this. Yes, yeah. so. DM us if you want a chemistry lesson. We can make this happen. Uh, I got you. But so part of what the seasoning does is it it gets rid of a lot of those more volatile tannic compounds, and a lot of winemakers, especially the higher end winemakers, they'll go, I need this type of barrel, this type of wood, seasoned for this long because they're planning on certain con certain um, complements of tannins and, and compounds going into their wine to finish it just the way they want. So it tells you how crazy you can get with oak, but you don't have to. Anywho, thank you guys. See you later.
Yeah. <laughs> Thank you. Our live audience. <clears throat> bye, live audience. <laughs> That's not good. We shouldn't be saying bye to our live audience when we're still live. Yeah. That hey, wait. Like, live oh. audience, come back. <laughs> <laughs> so, <laughs> and he's back. <laughs> and he's back. That's <laughs> awesome. Nice. Another huge part of Oak, and especially relevant to us as home brewers and home distillers, is the char. Now, the, the char, just assuming that everything was seasoned properly, which it's really a safe assumption these days, assuming that everything was seasoned properly, the char is what can make, decide, and change your product. So you want to kind, you, you want to align the char with the flavor compounds that you're working with, like Abby did with the uh, with the boche and the braggot. You know, with a heavy char, you're getting more earth, you're getting more mushroom, you're getting more caramelization of the hemicellulose and the lignans. So it, it's it's going to complement those Maillardy flavors in both of those products because it all kind of fits. Does that make any sense? I think so. I followed you. <laughs> it was good. Fair enough. We get a little lengthy. I was just like, well, it's good. I'll, I'll try to tuck it back. <laughs> <clears throat> I haven't said a whole lot during this episode, so I got to like poke in every now and then. All right. Or people Thanks. are going to think, I was like, why is this Josh guy here? Thanks for that. I'm finishing this. Are you serious? You have three more. <laughs> <laughs> Wait, there's not enough comments for that. Oh, that's awesome. No, you should finish that. It's good. It's all good. But, so, the, the, the char makes a big deal. And generally, so you have... You have one, two, three, and four, which are kind of the main ones. Um, that's light, medium, medium plus, and heavy. Now, <laughs> big distillers and big winemakers can tell the Coopers to go, I need a number seven char on that. <laughs> <laughs> which uh, apparently, um, who was it? Who was I reading about? I think that's awesome. Yeah, Somebody, somebody and a half. pulled off a number seven char. Well, and that being said, for Frey Ranch's bourbon, they're using a number five. Which is a heavy plus. Heavy plus. Really? Yeah. I wouldn't have guessed that. Uh, according to Colby, anyway. Um, there's a video on it. Yeah, you should check that video out. Yeah, it's we a good video. We did a whole behind the scenes of Free Yeah, it was super cool. Super cool to see that operation. Or their operation, I should say. But but one, two, three, and four are kind of the... Those are the average. So one is light. Two is... Two is medium. Three is medium plus, And four is heavy. There's there's kind of an interesting line between light and medium. Mm-hmm. And there's a there's a, a big variable of temperatures, but it's a it's a fairly safe assumption. So, <laughs> um, like I said, those those designations can kind of, of endlessly be played upon, but there's a lot to be said about what char and what product and how to kind of fix stuff. We're gonna do a sensory thing with with just these three in a minute. <laughs> no, we're not. It's smelling. Oh, okay. Yeah, I'm not you're gonna it. drink them. I'm not. But <laughs> Abby says the oak and the braggot really balance well with the sweetness of the malt. As I didn't use hops, it gave a lovely earthiness to the boche and highlighted the caramelized honey toffee flavors. And and that, that makes girl. yeah, that's, really awesome. that's awesome. And it makes so much sense. You that it shows that you definitely chose the right char and the right kind of. Uh, flavor and character profiles to to balance and enhance what you're already trying to do which is really the point of oak um <clears throat> real fast getting into some nuts and bolts so we hit the um, char. light oak tends to lean more towards the sweet light caramel and it it's it's the the lighter the char the more tannins that are left so it, it kind of helps build the body that's why with, um, I think Irish whiskey is such a great example of this. Because if, if you're drinking higher end... You should have brought some Jameson. I know. <laughs> Jameson is for pounding. <laughs> Talisker, Talisker Storm... I'll pretend he didn't say that. Don't worry, Jameson. <laughs> and not in a bad way. I, I pound Jameson because I enjoy it. But it, it's, it's a pounding whiskey. I'm, I'm digging myself deep. <laughs> so... When, when you see some of the, the higher-end Irish-type whiskeys, you know what I mean? <laughs> like <Yeah>. Jameson. <laughs> As a, a fabulous example, like Jameson, they, they have they a little... They so much. They have a little bit more body. You know what I'm saying? There's, there's a little bit more body there, and that's because it's, it's a lighter oak. Shit. I don't know how you're going to fix this one, but I love it. I'm crying now. 
Would I'm, you I'm glad you're having a good time. My <laughs> foot tastes like crap, though. <laughs> I'm gonna drink some more of this Frey Ranch, and they're we'll gonna call it sue good. us so hard. Nah, <laughs> we're promoting their product. I know. <laughs> so, <clears throat> so more tannins, more of the the lighter characteristics. I always. <laughs> <laughs> Joe says you're gonna pound Jameson on the air. If we had any, yes. <laughs> right now we're pounding the uh, the Frey Ranch. That we're not so... pounding Frey Ranch. We're Just... not. Let me just clear the air there. We're Sipping not being the free si- ranch that you were so kind to provide. It. And <laughs> thanks for joining us, Bill. Appreciate it, man. Oh my Bill. goodness. So <clears throat> the medium oak is think <laughs> think American bourbon. There's there's more caramel. There's more uh there there's more dissolution of the, the lignans, so there's more vanilla or more of the what do they call it? A vanillin compound, right? So medium is is kind of that that American bourbon style thing that you can get, and you you get the vanilla, you get the the toasted caramel. Think of C sixty if you're a brewer. That's that's a really good example of that's good kind of the character that you get. Well, you don't get vanilla from C sixty, but you get a lot more of the other characters. I get what you're saying now. Um, medium plus will still give you caramel notes, but medium plus because of the uh, the, the way they heat it up and how much more is heated, you get more breakdown of the lignans, so you actually get more of the vanillin compounds and more vanilla from a medium plus toast, which is wonderful, especially if it fits with what you're doing. We need more medium plus in our life. Yeah, I always need more medium plus in my life. <laughs> medium plus is good. We need to, are we are we gonna get so I'm We're not page. I'm not I'm not trying to interrupt you no, no. too much, but just a little bit. But are we gonna get to like um, surface areas and stuff like that with chips and spirals and it's a page and a half away. Just bear with me. <laughs> All right. I'm still waiting for it. <laughs> These guys are gonna have like a timeline <clears throat> elapse jump on their comments and be like, if you just jump to like a fast minute forward, 40, it will totally tell you what you wanna know. <laughs> <laughs> Jesse says some blue label. <laughs> so yes. <laughs> send it. Oh my goodness. <laughs> Jason says I'm gonna write that on your bathroom wall. Ugh. Please do. That would be fabulous. <laughs> We've got chalk in there for you, man. He's a gold medal winner, too. Yeah, he is a gold medal <laughs> winner. And a judge. And a judge. So heavy oak is <clears throat> there's there's more breakdown of hemicellulose, there's more breakdown of lignans, it breaks down more of the vanillin compounds, it makes more sugar, so what you get from that is a lot of like what Abby was saying with her braggot and her bochet. Um, you get these deeper caramel toffee flavors you get this earth almost mushroomy characteristic um that's this would you like to do a sensory panel on that (laughs) um how dark that is my uh my my favorite like explanation of heavy oak is heavy oak is awesome it's it's this truffle compound that you get because it's it's not quite mushroom it's not quite earth it's this cool Truffle is the only real way to, to describe it. I love truffles. If it weren't a mushroom, I would also love it. <laughs> but I do love it in distillates. It's it's a weird thing that doesn't make any sense. Yeah. <laughs> All right. Racing red... Well, no, we need to talk carbon Racing. filtering before we talk about spirals and cubes and surface area. So, carbon filtering... Bryce just says drink. He's, you know what? Bryce is right. <laughs> Cheers, Bryce. That was so loud on the microphone. <laughs> <laughs> it was a cool sound. This actually... Uh... So that was an awkward silence right there. That was really awkward for me because I'm waiting for you to pour me more whiskey. They're all sitting there watching like, what is going on right now? It's so Darren, awkwardly up, silent. Darren says fungi. Yes. Oh, free ranch. In the best so possible way. Um, <clears throat> so carbon filtration. The, the deeper the char, the more carbon that is present in the wood. And this is incredible, especially with distillates, but even with beer and wine and meat and cider. Because that, oh, that carbon sucks up and soaks up all of those higher alcohols anything that was was produced during fermentation that may not be a, an ideal flavor compound acetone is a great example 
which it happens. It's part of it. It's part of fermentation. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But these this deeper char soaks all that up and leaves it behind in the barrel. So you get all the best out of the barrel, and you still get this this incredible product coming out the other end with all of these barrel characteristics. So carbon filtration, yes, good job. All right. <clears throat> Caleb's like, that was so loud. It made me jump. <laughs> <laughs> Fabulous. <laughs> Sorry, Caleb. I love it. Yeah, sorry, Caleb. We didn't mean to scare you. <laughs> so, <clears throat> we're home brewers, right? We're home distillers. So, you have two options. You can put your product in the oak, or you can put your oak in the product. Which, let's be honest, for most of us, putting your oak in the product is a more likely circumstance. Yeah, we should have some spirals up here. That would have been a great product. Yeah. Hey, director. Can you grab a couple spirals? Just like... One, three. As many or as you have in your hand. The, just bring all of those. They're different colors. They are different <laughs> colors. <laughs> so, surface area is a huge thing, right? Spirals. Uh, Bryce says, wrong bottle, jar. <laughs> Bryce really wants you to drink from the jar. No, my, well, the jar's... In, no, I'm not drinking <laughs> from the jar. There's not enough comments yet. <laughs> the, yeah, these spirals. <clears throat> so, you have... The, the main thing that barrel science is based off of is surface area to volume. And, and because as homebrewers we have so many different options of, of what kind of oak to put into what we're doing, that you, you really have to decide what you want and, and how to get there. Um, I know a lot of local distillers that use oak chips and make amazing stuff. But the problem with oak chips is the surface area is yeah exactly consistency. The surface area will I always be in there. You've been all over. I, I told you to drink whiskey when I was when I got on my soapbox. I, I'm very <laughs> no, passionate about oak. Up. Yeah, surface area is a thing. It is one and ounce to one ounce of chips is not the same. Yeah, one ounce of cubes to one ounce of chips, or one ounce by weight of spiral to one ounce of chips. You you are dealing or even with chips to chips. It's not even the same. even chips to chips is that's, what I was trying to say. It's that's like a, chips to chips is not the same. One ounce of each of those is not the same. Surface area is different because like you may have a big chip in there that is one ounce, or like a bunch of little chips. You know, it's a lot different. And it's because they take these barrels and they run them through a wood chipper, and, like, well, and then they put them in a bag and they sell them to homebrew shops, and that's that's part of it. And it's it's fine. But you have to know what you're getting into. You have to know... Yeah. Or at least understand it a little bit. You know, if you have a good understanding of it, it's like you can get fairly consistent. <laughs> James says, jar barrel. That's the only option to drink next. <laughs> hey, it's whatever you want, man. It's it's your monkey. No, I I'm just holding I the didn't tail. get enough comments yet. I'm still waiting. <laughs> I don't even see enough. Wash your chips, Andrew too. Says, yes. That's a good point. <clears throat> We're, and, and chips You should would, wash them. Yeah, whatever you're doing. Yeah. They, they have to be washed. They have to be sanitized. Unless you're going into a distillate, then I wouldn't even bother. But if you wash them, you can wash some of the excess tannins off, especially with chips. With with cubes and spirals, it's not a huge deal. But with chips, it always is because there's there's sawdust in the chips, and that's that's yeah, part of it. It adds tannin. Extra stuff you don't and, want. Yeah, sometimes you want it. Like if you're doing a fruit wine or whatever, like our fruit wine kits, the uh, a little bit of sawdust, it adds to body. It, it helps a little bit. It's, it's, what's the word, um, flushed out or diluted into five gallons. But if you're doing like a beer or something that you're really trying to nail, it's, it's kind of a different deal. And, and you're right. <laughs> Can Good you just job. talk about sanitizing chips, spirals, etc.? I'm glad you asked, Jason. Is that our <laughs> next bullet point? It's, I don't see it on here yet. Is that page <clears throat> five or we're only on page two and we're already like. It's page We're four. We're already like 49 minutes into It's this page broadcast. four, all right. So but we haven't even got halfway through all this stuff that you put on here. We almost need to do two shows with this. Seriously. We're, we're right there. So to, to answer um, Jason's question, are your spirals pre-washed, says Taryn. So, to, so we're, we're getting to that. So to answer Jason's question, um, sanitizing your wood product, whatever it is, spiral, cube, chips, whatever. Um, if, if you're going into beer, wine, mead, cider, and it's something that you want like bourbon barrel aged or whatever, you can always soak it in something that's 80 proof. That if something can live through being soaked for seven days at 80 proof, it deserves to be there as far as I'm concerned. <laughs> um, <clears throat> if, you, if you don't want that, then 
what I do is I, you know, those that old school colander that your mom made really nasty broccoli in back in the day. So you put that in a pan and you get it to a steaming boil, and then you put your chips, your cubes, your spirals, whatever you're using, in there and time it for exactly one minute. Pull it out and put it right in the product. That's those are those are kind of the the easiest ways to it's go like about. Fourth of July fireworks show. Yeah. You drop it in there. Blum. Amazing. Yeah. And it, it makes it super easy. It's an easy way to do it. And I told Aaron you says, this bottle would be finished. Aaron says sanitize your wood. That's what I'm taking away from this. That's that's a good takeaway. Yeah, if you're not sure, sanitize the wood. <laughs> no, Nobody likes wood that isn't clean. <laughs> I'm just saying. Yes. So, sanitize with ethanol. <laughs> sanitize with steam. Whatever you do, sanitize it. Um... <laughs> I feel like this got really off track. Do you want to do the next one? <laughs> no, hold on, I gotta figure out what page we're on. <clears throat> you should you should cover cubes. Cubes. I love cubes, especially the Hungarian. Cubes. Uh, Hungarian cubes are good because surface area is the same. So if you were to do one, two, four, five, six, seven, twelve, one, I mean, however many ounces that you do on the Hungarian oak cubes is the surface area is the same, absorption is the same, is tannics or is it well? But it's like it's gonna be very close. The tannins are gonna be s similar enough to where, to where you can almost replicate it. Yeah. And uh, but it, it it it's very good. Hungarian oak <clears> is <throat> one of those things that I actually enjoy using most of the time because surface area is always the same. Yeah. Versus like American oak chips, medium oak chips, heavy oak chips. You know, spirals are the next best thing next to doing you know Hungarian oak cubes. You know, but you don't have Hungarian oak spirals. Right. So, unfortunately. Unfortunately, which would be a fantastic thing. It, it really would be. And, yeah. you know, the, the spirals are probably, well, the spirals and the cubes are probably the closest thing that you can get to actual, to an actual 53 or 59 gallon barrel, depending on what you're doing. <clears throat> um, one thing that people are doing, which I think is awesome, is the uh, one guy made a triple and soaked his spirals in Chardonnay because he wanted a Chardonnay barrel aged triple. Why would you do that? Because those flavors are perfect together. A Chardonnay full of butter? Well, don't use a buttery one. Use Rombauer or They're something. all buttery. No, Rombauer is not. You're not tasting correctly. Shout out to Rombauer because <laughs> you guys make the only Chardonnay that I can actually drink. <laughs> um, <clears throat> diacetyl free. But... You know that so so you it doesn't have to be like a fourteen percent Chardonnay is is plenty especially over the course of seven days to kill anything that's going to infect your your beer you know what I mean so the play around with it there's there's plenty of room to go in every direction you know it doesn't have to be a, a whiskey or a bourbon barrel aged whatever you can do a Zin you can do a Chard you can do you know whatever blows your skirt up which is what it's all about. <laughs> Aaron says, OMG, Josh needs a shard lesson. <laughs> oh my gosh. This woman. Andrew says, East Coast, Black Oak, Heavy Char. I am so with you, Andrew. That sounds delicious. <laughs> I volunteer. Did you see Chris Buchanan? It's like, my mom microwaved. microwaved. <laughs> oh, I miss that. My mom microwaved our, our broccoli. broccoli. What's the fancy colander shit? <laughs> <laughs> It's, oh my gosh, these guys! Uh, Chris, <laughs> it's such great viewers. I know, I love You're it. You're so good, Chris. It's straight out of the '80s. <laughs> it's just a a little metal thing. I don't even think it's stainless. It's probably made of lead, but it's just a little thing that folds in to the inside of your pan, and then you can steam your broccoli so that you steam out all of the flavor and nutrients, we, so that people can eat it. Are we talking food right now? He had a broccoli question. Right. What do you want from me? No, Chris is awesome. <laughs> mm. oh, Jeremy says, adding a cup or two of pure maple syrup to the wort 10 minutes before the flame out can add a woody flavor to the beer. Nice and porters and stouts. That is an awesome example. I, I will be honest, Jeremy, I have not played as much with maple syrup as I plan to, yeah. but it's, it's good to know that that, that profile is out there because I'm going to uh, try it. I think it would be hard to get that, but... Well, I want to try it. I want to do like a maple mead. <laughs> a maple. Dude, three pounds per gallon maple syrup, ferment it out. 
Uh, we'll make some pancakes. We'll drink it. We should do it. <laughs> Good job, Jeremy. Let's do it. <laughs> I love it. Darren says buttercream, too. East Coast, <laughs> black oak, heavy char. Jason says there's literally a Chardonnay called butter. There, there is no reason. And he's right. I just had that Sunday. Oh, you drank it? It said butter on the label. Blech. Whoa. I can't even taste diacetyl when I taste that. Oh, my gosh. I'm sorry. There is no... No, it said butter on it. it I know. Like... It's a whole thing. There is no reason to celebrate diacetyl. It's not a thing. Is that how you say di- diacetyl and not diacetyl? Yeah, it's diacetyl. Diacetyl. If you're coming from the science perspective. Science. So how does it come from... Was it? Grammar. Diacetyl. Does it still the same? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Acetyl's a thing. It doesn't change just because you put words in front or behind of it. <laughs> in front of or behind it. Oh my gosh. Bryce I lo- says... I love her show so much. <laughs> Bryce says maple syrup and red <laughs> ale is great. I could see that. Again, yeah, that I, I need to play... A, we, need, we need to play around a little bit more with maple syrup. Dude, Dude, we're we've like, got four minutes and we've got like six more pages. At least. Okay. Have you seen... We're, we're going to post these. So... Like... like don't be shy, friends. They're, they're... I'm done. I'm kidding. I'm not done. Okay. I, I I admire how much time you put in these. Thank you. I think it's great. Real real fast, something that we I'm really need to cover. Words. You are slurring, which is super fun to watch. <laughs> One thing we should say real fast, um, a, a lot of people want to take their oak products home. Like, you know, you go, you go and you get some spirals or, or whatever. They take it home and they want to char it. No, it's, it's already it's, charred. It's already charred, and it's already charred yeah. to spec. So if if you want to double char it, you should do that because that's what home is all about. But you should leave it alone. Yes, pretty much. So <laughs> light and medium, they they ha- that that char happens from two forty six to three hundred and fifty six F. So if it and that's that's surface temperature. So that's just not like well. I left it in the oven for five minutes, you know, at, at 356, so it should be about right. No. it's. Are we cutting me off? Am I getting too crazy? No, you're fine. I was just... I, sorry. I didn't mean to interrupt you. Keep going. Bryce I, says Josh needs another one. I'm just keeping it live right now. No, the you, bottle's empty, Bryce. I'm sorry. No, it's but look, up. there's heavy oak. Cut it back. Ex- <laughs> finish your explanation here. It's like... We probably Jamil is probably watching us right now. He's like these these clowns right now. It's like they don't even know what they're talking about. Because all of a sudden, he like, doesn't know we're clowns. <laughs> <laughs> Jamil is the best. <laughs> all right, real fast. Jason says if you want maple flavor, try adding fenugreek, which I've never heard of. I have no oh idea what that goodness. is. The yeast are the only ones who get to enjoy real maple syrup because it ferments out, which totally makes sense to me. All simple sugar. Um, Andrew says, longer the char, the lower the temperature. No. I'm glad you asked. So, a number three char is 392. A number four char is 446 Fahrenheit. And, like I said, this is all surface temperature stuff. Uh, most of these things happen between 30 seconds and 2 minutes and 30 seconds. But it's it's more about getting the right surface temperature at the right temp for the right time. So, that's why there's a variable there. Um, Abby right. says slurring just means you need another drink, Josh. I love I love Abby. She's she is, she is the most amazing girl ever. I know. I, I like your style, Abby. <laughs> Bryce says that jar is not empty. It is empty. There's nothing in there. No, he's talking about that jar. I'm not drinking out. Heavy not, toast. There's not enough comments. <laughs> How many comments do you need? There's like forty. Where do you see forty at? I made it up. <laughs> so <clears throat> we have one minute so really fast um, tips and tricks we covered sanitizing with booze we covered sanitizing with steam uh, one thing I really wanted to hit was setting your beer up for success um, we actually go into wine and cider and mead and <clears throat> you'll be able to, to we didn't download. hit any of that I know that's what the whole show is oh, about. We missed it. We should have talked about that more. I, I should have put it at the front and not at the end. Man, these but, guys are so mad now. We should do like a part two. Yeah, we should do a part two. Well, part two will be all about science. I thought this was a part two. 
<laughs> Damn it. Darren says, won't the char sterilize? Darren, yes, the char will sterilize. However, it goes through a lot of hands between the char and the end user. So it's it's not safe to assume that it's still sterilized from the Cooper to, you know, by the time you get it at yeah, you brew need chatter. Be careful about that. Yeah. Um, so setting your beer up for success. If you plan on oak aging, you'll need to bulk age because you don't want the yeast. You don't you don't, you don't want your beer to be on the yeast for three to nine months, depending on what you're doing. Unless it's sour, then it's like, eh. <clears throat> Bill says, "Don't forget to soak your oak in cider." Well said, <laughs> well said, Joe. Thank Thanks, you, Bill. <laughs> I love you, Bill. Bill. Um, one thing that is is serious along all products. Drinking of the jars. Is, geez, what did I say? Part two, <laughs> drinking of the jars. Oh my gosh, we can't even do the show. <laughs> I, I I'm w- not drinking of the jar. No. Of no. any of them? No. It's ethanol. It's not it's okay. Clean. Not okay. It's it's. It's gonna be like super like tan- no. It won't be tannic. It'll probably be. <laughs> not even cool. Anywho. Not even um, cool. Don't even try to convince them. Yeah, it's not even a true story. If if enough people say Josh, you have to drink the jar in the comments, then he'll drink the jar. It's it's, it's going to happen. <laughs> Will you stop? It's not okay. <laughs> Sorry, it's not okay. All right. Anyway, what whatever they product love me. Is. They haven't even messaged right now. Is that this kid? <laughs> We're about to see the whole thing go. <laughs> so not even no. All right, we have to cut this off, and I'm sorry, but real fast. Um. Okay. The, the one thing you should do with whatever product, I don't care if it's distillate, beer, wine, let it sit for at least a week and then taste it regularly and often because you oak must changes, taste it. Yes, it that changes is my two fast. Cents. You have to taste it as it prolongs through this process. It's like, what, go on. Making any sense or? <laughs> uh, no. Darren says, drink the jar. Andrew says, let's I was kill trying Josh. To, I was in a moment and then no, it just stopped. Moment. Go. No, the moment's over with. No, you have to recreate the moment. I can't recreate it. You have to start. You're, so, you're, my, you're my moment creator. Thanks. So, <laughs> but you you have to taste on the regular because once... But you do... <laughs> am I creating the moment or are you? You just started it. I was yes, trying. You do need to taste the oak as you add it and do this and ferment it and age it. Like, if you're not tasting the oak as it goes through its process, it's, you're, you're just going to come up with something that's not really what you want. It's like, you have... Why do you keep laughing? It's like, stop it. I'm trying to be serious right now. You're all super serious. And then I'm going to read the comments. <laughs> oh, my gosh. But you got to taste it. Like You guys are awesome. If you sit here and you do, like, a barely stout, barely porter, you know, whatever you want to do, you know, rum, whiskey... You know, moonshine, anything. You gotta taste it as you add the oak to it. And it's like, because then you can sit there and you can judge the amount of oak that you're adding to it and taste it and figure out where you're at. Well, and oak, especially in distillates, but even with beer, wine, mead, cider, oak, there's there's a point where it hits its peak. Mead and cider is like, ah, oh, you could throw, well. Mead cider, you have a little bit more wiggle room, you're right. But there there's still a point where it peaks and you you want to pull it off the oak when it peaks because there are a ton of compounds in there that are going to keep evolving and keep aging. With distillates, you leave it on oak too long and you know that old lady that goes to the grocery store and she hasn't had a sense of smell for 30 years and she just bathes in that nasty perfume that's lavender? It, it's, it's awful. It's the worst thing I've ever smelled in my life. Whoa. And I'm talking about the old lady and the over oak distillate. It's <laughs> it's super bad. So, like Josh was saying, taste on the regular. Pull it when it's prime. Even a little if, thief, you know. It's yes, like a little thief will go a long ways. Yeah, or the master baster, the the stainless steel <laughs> turkey baster. It. it so it's, you say that we're live right now. They're recording this. It's, it's they are like, so gonna clip this and turn it into a. Are you kidding Should me? Should we read the comments? No, I don't want to read them. Darren is. says, drink the jar. Andrew doesn't want to kill you. Bryce says, drink it. Aaron says, you're not following your own rule. How many times have you tasted what's in that barrel regularly? Um, I taste it weekly, okay? 
That's BS. Ugh. P.S. Um, Goodness. <clears throat> Abby says, drink the jaw. And then she says, jar, you guys aren't the only ones slurring. Oh my goodness. Bryce says he's being super serial, guys. Thanks, Bryce. <laughs> Thanks for driving that home for us. <laughs> and Tyler says this has to be some kind of record. So I, I guess what I get from that is you're drinking a jar. No, I'm not drinking a jar. You should at least taste one. If I get four more comments in 30 30 minutes. minutes. I'll uh-huh. drink a jar. Are they 30 seconds? Four comments from four different people. <laughs> Abby <laughs> says there needs to be a brew or meme thread. I totally agree with you. <laughs> <laughs> she took the words out of my mouth. She is like <laughs> so amazing. Oh, I love that. Oh, yeah. shit. We'll set that up. <laughs> James says jar. Uh, the, oh, fuck. Do it. Oh, I shouldn't even say that word on the mic. Oh. I think that's three. Technically, that's four, but one of them wasn't jar related. So, <laughs> Andrew says comment one. Oh my gosh. So light, medium, or heavy? These guys. You have to be kidding me. Oh, aren't you happy I called you out? Homebrew challenge video is one hundred <laughs> times four. Oh, Jesse, I'll leave one here for you tomorrow. We have such amazing people. Yeah, you guys are awesome. Thank you for joining yeah, us thank and you interacting for with us. us. Um, <clears throat> interacting is amazing. Yeah, we, we definitely it. do appreciate that. So it's like RJ puts a lot of work into all these pages. Well, and we decided we today go, we burned down a lot of trees. For these. Okay, only only one per live. One per. And live. I plant a tree a week, so it balances out. But um, we're, we, we decided today that we're going to have a whole new section on the website dedicated to not only so you can go back and watch the video, but I will post all the notes as well. So you'll start seeing that very soon. Um, so if you want to go through my notes, I cuss a lot, so keep that in mind. It's not for the faint of heart, but the, those will be up there, so... What jar are you drinking, Josh? Because we gotta we gotta sign off. I don't know. My son Caleb just texted me. He's like, "So which one are you gonna pick?" <laughs> <laughs> yes. He's a, he's Good looking out, Caleb. He's eleven. He's like, "So which one are you gonna do?" <laughs> I love my voice. So love. real fast, just to make this a teaching moment. It's not gonna work out well. I'm not light gonna... is gonna make better body, sweeter character. Medium, you're going to get a little bit more caramel. You're going to get a little bit more vanilla. Heavy, you're going to get more of that organ pinot earthy truffle characteristic. So oh my goodness. I, I will drink the opposite of whatever you choose. Just because I'm a team player. <laughs> Why would you guys do this? We're, we're seven minutes over, man. Uh, we are Jason seven. says, thank you guys. Got to go. My kid's... <clears throat> <laughs> gotta go make my kids some Jason's cocoa like, pops I gotta, like, I gotta go dude it's like I'm a family man Jason cheers man thank you for joining us we appreciate all the comments that's awesome yeah. <laughs> Bryce says that's a good kid I'll Caleb just, is a good kid Caleb is fucking fantastic I shouldn't dude, say that online cussing I'm sorry we're a family do show do not ever cuss on live like do not say we're a family show that teaches about making alcohol <laughs> All right, so I'll do the heavy one. All right, I'll do light. It's not gonna yes, be good. Middle. Yeah, that a boy. So <clears throat> we're we're working, like I said, we're working with kettle. So it's it's a really clean, um, clean across the board kind of vodka. And as of right now, all of the oak has been in here for twenty three hours. It's not good. So <laughs> not good. <laughs> this is horrible. It's not that bad. Horrible. What, you don't drink Yours vodka at night? Floaters in that bad boy, though. Yeah, it's because they're not done. <laughs> it's not good, Caleb. They're not quite watching soaked. right now. With everybody else. <laughs> so I'm not gonna down this right now. It's no, like, don't don't like, pound it. That's ugh. no, no. We're we're taking a sip. All right. And we're we're talking about what it tastes like. All right, that's actually a good idea. Yeah. <laughs> you cannot pound it. That's it's vodka, man. <laughs> Why you make fun of my? So, <clears throat> real fast nose. It smells like a tree. <laughs> That's a really good description, actually. Like Tyler, a really what do you? Big tree. Like a big oak. Yeah, like big a medium tree. tree. <laughs> <laughs> what do you get from yours? <laughs> Kill that virus. <laughs> <laughs> 
Oh. Abby says, thank oh, you guys for the entertainment yeah. and science. It's my favorite convo. Thank you for joining us, thank Abby. You, Abby. And thank you for sharing all of the cool things yes. that you do because that's awesome. And it's also super inspiring. So cheers Abby's to that. Awesome. Yep. All right. <clears throat> so give me give me three Which, aroma notes. Both of you. Oh, both of you give me so three aroma heavy. notes. <laughs> all right. Get three aroma notes. We're, we're ten it's minutes over. It's super heavy so. oak and like not good. Tell me about <laughs> mushrooms and truffles and stuff like that. They're not in here. My nose definitely isn't trained for this. But it actually, doesn't smell bad though. You don't I'm have to be say. trained. It's like, like it, it just. All right. Uh, it does smell good. Expound. Yeah, this is this is like real good. It's definitely heavy. <laughs> so I get I get really distinct sweet caramel. Mm. Sweet caramel. I get this straight little... ethanol. I would say this is almost a little cinnamon. <laughs> I get ethanol. <laughs> Definitely. Ethanol. You, you gotta, <clears throat> you gotta smell under the ethanol. That's where, that's where the magic is. You gotta wait for it to burn your nostrils and. And I get sweet wood. <laughs> what is it hard? You're welcome. <laughs> Boo! I didn't think you'd say that on camera. Oh, but I did. I don't think it's a right. good idea. Three notes. Definitely heavy. Super heavy. Look at that. Oh. Mine's super light. I'm drinking, I'm drinking some JMO right now. I think heavy's actually sort of better. This is vodka to begin with. Yeah. Huh. Kettle. So everyone's like so afraid of it. Yeah, yeah. No, I tried to do it. It was pretty damn good. So All right. Afraid. So since neither of these guys will give me aroma notes, let's just drink it. Cheers. I'm, I'm <laughs> yeah. not drinking the whole thing. Don't eat the wood. I say that all the time. <laughs> Damn it. You're supposed to be tasting right now, not talking about your wood. So, from straight vodka, the, the flavor I get is, again, super, super sweet caramel. Like, really, really blatant, distinct sweet caramel. Mm. Um, and I'm on light. That's actually tannic good. woody. Yes, yeah. it's very tannic. Yeah, you definitely get like, the tannic. Even on in, even. But on we're earth. drinking straight out of fucking. Uh, sorry, Don't. dude. Quit cussing. <laughs> YouTube. We're a fam. <laughs> we're a family show that talks about distillation of I alcohol. Know. My son's is gonna message me about that. He's like, Dad, you said that word. <laughs> so, <clears throat> give me give me flavor profiles. Like just I, it's blurt it out. Super Definitely still get some cinnamon in there. Like, I think that may have been from the smell of it. Really? Yeah. You get know, that's, cinnamon, huh? That's me, yeah. Mm. I see what you're getting from yeah. the cinnamon. Yeah. It's <clears throat> it's that wet wood characteristic. Like It's like every mm. morning when I wake up. Boo! <laughs> Boo, I'm trying to pull this out of the gutter. These guys which, hate this show. Which is not... Like my mo, <laughs> they hate us so much right now. <laughs> That's <clears throat> the I medium. Smell, smell that. That is straight caramel. That's caramel. That is caramel. No, That's really straight good. Straight caramel. Yeah, it's straight caramel. You won the lottery with this one. Uh, yeah, that was, good. that was good. All right, that we we caramel. have to sign off because these people. Sorry, guys. We love all of you. Thank you for joining us. <clears throat> uh, <laughs> we're gonna we're gonna have this posted on a page tomorrow. And go back and watch it if you missed it. That's not a thing, I guess. But yeah, thank you all for joining us. We really appreciate all the comments and all of the uh, <laughs> telling Josh to drink the jars, <laughs> which really it made my my whole week. So we love it. Cheers, thank guys. Thank you. Yeah, brew on. Brew on. Hold on. How do I do this again? Let's see here. You're the guy. Like, if you don't know how to do it, we're we're effed. Is this it? Oh, See, I think that's it right there. Let me just stop it. That medium is straight caramel. Is that what that is? Like you, like, oh, smell this one. This is 